There we go. Hello, and welcome to my channel. I'm the DD Wannabe. My name is Rob. Normally, I'm on a different channel doing different things. I am a dungeon master. I am a beer and bourbon enjoyer. I am a podcast host. I professionally play pretend on the internet. But right now, I'm playing Gloomhaven. Uh, this is the digital version of a very popular and very unforgiving board game that is very close, in a way, to D&D Combat, especially older editions of D&D Combat, where you would have abilities, almost literally a deck of cards you could play for your class that would regularly refresh. While this doesn't look too much like modern versions of Dungeons & Dragons, which is what I normally play, such as 5th edition. This is pretty classic roleplay. And decisions that you make in the game matter over the course of the game. You do level up, you do pick new skills and cards as you go along, and it's a pretty great time. I'm here on my own channel because I want to start streaming here. I play a lot of games in my downtime just to relax, and I figure there's no reason I shouldn't share that experience with you, my internet friends. I'm starting the stream at midnight, local time. I'm not even sure that anybody is going to show up while we're live, but hopefully you can enjoy this later on on the YouTube channel. However you found me, I'm glad you're here. Let's play a game. So I have played a little bit of this. But it may be worth just starting anew. Yeah, let's start anew. Uh, we gotta enter a campaign name. A name for our guild. Uh, let's see. I want to be the... Jaws the Lion. Ah, uh, there's cool guild names. Do I want to be cool or do I want to try and be funny? That's hardly even a question for me, isn't it? We will be... Surly Sultans. That's us, baby. We are Sultans. We are Surly. Deal with it. I'm going to try and do this what I consider optimally. Welcome to the harsh lands of Gloomhaven, recruit. You think you have what it takes to become a mercenary out there on the edge of the world? We are paid to venture into the darkest forests of the region and to step into ancient crypts with the unmistakable stench of death and a lot of skulls. flesh. Mm, lovely place to earn a name for yourself. Be ready to face cutthroats, undead, fearsome tribes, and dreadful demons from other realms. You didn't find yourself as a mercenary. I've seen like Without none of this content. A few skulls, this looks so you? exciting. <laughs> My headset is dying because I've been working all day. There we go. Before going into the harrowing wilderness around in Gloomhaven, you need at least two mercenaries. Let's make a couple. So I want, I already kind of know what I want to do here. I want to play the Brute. Select this guy. His name is Brute. It's spelled Brute. So his name is going to be Etu. Etu Brute. Any history nuts know that one? Okay. Now... You're going to, each character in this game has a quest. This is their win condition, as it were. When they complete their personal reason for being a mercenary, they retire. You don't get to play them anymore, and you'll unlock a new class to potentially enjoy. I like this from a role-playing standpoint. I think a lot of D&D characters should think this way. When their adventure is over, you know, no D&D character is ever going to fix the world. 
Right? There's always going to be something new to do, but when they're done adventuring, they're done. I mean, if they survive and make it that far in the first place. So this guy, we could complete do two different scenarios in the Lingering Swamp. And then he would be done. Oh no, objective one of three. Interesting, he has more objectives. Oh, and then he unlocks the Fading Lookout quest and follows it to its conclusion. That sounds interesting. Or, find the Skullbane Axe and use it to kill undead stuff. I think the Fall of Man is fun. Welcome, Etu. Alright, now we need another guy. And I have more experience playing the Cragheart than any other class in this. Uh, it's a good support class. I think it has some ranged options. I think it pairs well with the Brute. So, we're going to be this guy. And I already know what name I want for him. Big Baba. All right, a helping hand. Two other characters achieving their personal quest. That would keep him around for a long time. And it's not a bad thing to have a high-level character still hanging out with you. Right? That's There's no downside to that. Uh, or earn 15 perk points from battle goals. I'm going to have him be around for a while. I'll unlock the bard either way, though. Or whatever the equivalent of the bard is in this game. Now, you know what? We'll do the battle legend. I'm just going to be a badass. There you go. Let's go, Pig Bapa. And I do like his... Yeah, you want me to click certain things, don't you? Uh, you have a merchant here. It's really hard to get gold in this game, and there's a lot of things that make you lose it. But we're going to kind of buy the default stuff for our guys here just to kind of make sure they live. You don't need to know about all this. Get it equipped. Equipping your items is important. Now, now we have a city encounter. We have our first opportunity to roleplay. So something's going to happen that's beyond our control, and we're going to decide how to handle it. Having recently returned from your latest adventure, you're approached by a ratty-looking boy in tears. Please, sirs, could you help me with my cat? He went over there, and I'm afraid... The boy points a dirty finger at a decrepit, abandoned building. I don't know what else to do. So this could be a trap! This could be a guy sending us in to get... jumped. By some creeps in the city. Uh... It's not that I have more important things to do, child. It's that I think it's a trap. To reassure the boy and go find the cat. You know what? Let's try and be good. And then if we're burned here, we have an excuse to not be good later. Oh, no! Good thing I don't think I have perk points to lose. Um, because perk points are what build you two level ups. Um. I gain a reputation, though. That's good. That doesn't come by every day. That means that we're... People will start giving us discounts and treating us better, and we get better options in the game. You approach the foreboding house, full of heroic bravado. There's certainly nothing otherworldly about the structure, but its fallen beams and piles of rubble do make it difficult to look around. By the time you find the cat hiding under a burned-out bed frame, you are utterly exhausted. At least the boy is ecstatic his cat has been found. 
All right, if I'm not in the hole for perk points, which I don't think you can be, this was a good decision in the long run. Go us. All right, now it's time for a quest. Now we're gonna have a wilderness encounter as we go. Everyone needs to eat. Whatever your reason for coming to Gloomhaven, out here on the edge of the world, that simple fact is never going to change. A mercenary can't fight on an empty stomach. So when Jaxera, a Valrath woman wearing a red cloak and enough gold jewelry to keep you fed for a decade, approaches you in a sleeping lion and offers to pay you ten gold coins to track down a thief and retrieve some stolen goods. Well, seems like as good an excuse as any to sober up and start paying off your tab. This thief has taken not painted as terribly good responsible people. the red-skinned merchant, her tail whipping about in agitation. I don't care what you do to him. Just bring back what is mine. Based on Jaxera's description, it was easy enough to knock around a few alley thugs and get a location of the thief's hideout. You don't find yourself as a mercenary way out in Gloomhaven without knowing how to crack a few skulls. So your target is the Black Barrel. Sounds like a lovely place. It does not that, Roger Craig Smith, but we'll go anyway. You're feeling a tad hungry as you walk down the road. You are considering stopping for a meal when you come across a thicket of bushes covered in green berries. The berries look delicious, but you hesitate. They could be poisonous. So, doing nothing does something. And doing something could be good or bad, and it may affect how hardy we are going into the next encounter. And unless you've done them before, it's really hard to tell what's the right answer. I think we're going to eat the berries. Yes! Okay. Blessed means there's an extra crit in my deck, which I'll explain when that comes up. So this great idea. <laughs> Going great so far. I thought this was a hard game. You shrug and grab a handful of berries to stuff in your mouth. They're incredibly sweet and just the right amount of tart. You couldn't feel better about your decision. Man. Those are some good berries. In more ways than one. The hill is easy enough to find. A short journey past the new market gate. And you see it jutting out on the edge of the corpse wood. Looking like a rat Pleasant under wood. a rug. Moving closer, you see the mound is formed from a black earth. Its small, overgrown entrance presents a worn set of stone stairs leading down into the darkness. As you descend, you gratefully notice light emanating from below. Unfortunately, the light is accompanied by the unmistakable stench of death. You contemplate what kind of thieves would make their camp in such a horrid place as you reach the bottom of the steps. Here, you find your answer. A rough group of cutthroats who don't seem to have taken very kindly to your sudden appearance. And Whoops. I tried to turn it up and when I clicked back to the game, I skipped it. Sorry. There's a rough group of cutthroats, and they're going to kill me. All right. We have battle goals for individual uh, members of the party here. We don't level up unless we consistently complete battle goals. And they might be detrimental to the mission as a whole to try and complete, or to other players. Because normally you would play this with more than one person, and I hope to eventually on the channel. So, they both got their own sets. Etu will get a perk point if he causes a trap to be sprung or disarmed on his turn. Or if he personally kills five or more monsters during the scenario. Pig Bappa will level up if he can loot five or more gold piles. Or gains... Very little experience, but he'll get two perk points. Mmm. 
two perk points is really good. So he's going to do that. He's going to try and not get experience. Because what does he need experience for if he's getting perk points? And me... I think you get experience for killing stuff. So I'm going to try and synergize since I am in the privileged position of being able to see both. I'm going to try to have uh, Etu do the killing here. Oh, you know what? Actually, I've played this scenario before. There's a trap that Etu can spring. No problem. And they're equally easy. So there we go. Now we're going to play the actual game. Take care of these unfortunates, your target says, backing out of the room. You can vaguely make out his silhouette as he retreats down a hallway and through a door to his left. Well, it's not every day we get people stupid enough to hand deliver their valuables to us, grins one of the larger bandits, unsheathing a rusty blade. We'll be killing you now. This is going to be a three-room dungeon. Jokes on them. If you had any valuables, you probably wouldn't be down here in the first place. Excellent point. All right, so here are my cards. You'll notice they all have three things going on about them. First of all, they have a number over here to the left. That is the initiative for that card. The quicker the card you play, the sooner you go in the round. Also, they have a top and a bottom half. You can only use the top or bottom of each card you pick until you get them back and can select again. And I'm going to be picking two cards per mercenary per turn. So the first thing I want to do is I want to run up and get in the mix with them. And you see the, uh, the shiny looking symbols on the bottom of that card over there that means i get experience when whatever that is triggers so i'm going to try and do that try and be hit by stuff next six sources of damage from attacks targeting me gain shield one So I'm going to try and get up there fast. Start shielding myself. That'll be my two. Now for Pig Bapa. I want to make sure I can heal my friend. And also hurt somebody. So I want to go slow. So of the two cards, the first card I pick is my initiative number. So I'm going to go intentionally slow. So I can make sure that Etu gets hit before me. I'm also going to pick a slightly closer starting position. These guys. Alright, notice. They drew cards too. And I don't know what they're going to do each turn until they do it. But they will always do this, and they will always act predictably, and they will always, if attack the nearest enemy, and if they are equally near, they will attack the one that's acting sooner. So Etu should be their target. Ah, and I do get to go first as Etu. Okay, excellent. So, we're going to use this. Oop, nope. We want... Ah, I messed up. I want to use the bottom of this and the top of this. They're not going to be moving. Hmm. Well, I definitely messed up there. That's okay. I could restart the round if I wanted to because it's a game. But I think... Just going to do... The fun thing here. We go ahead and move two. Get up here with this guy. Then I'm going to push this guy away from me. I, not only do I attack, but I also push my target away. 
Now you see that negative one that came up? Every time I do an attack, I draw a card from an invisible deck of modifiers. The Bless went into that deck. So that's why I was excited to get it. Now we're going to push you away. Scooch. And that's the end of his turn. He put a shield on himself, but he's not doing anything scary. Put a shield on himself, and then he's going to attack and poison me. That's a little bit too bad. It didn't do any damage because he drew a bad modifier too, but I am poisoned. That means healing is not going to work on me, and damage that I take is going to be a little worse. So I don't actually need to do my heal this turn because he didn't take any damage. I guess I could go ahead and wipe the poison off. That's not a bad idea. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's move up to my friend. Heal him. And it has the added effect of putting an earth effect in the room. That may help me later. Alright, now we do it all again. If I'm close to a guy and far from some other guys, I want to just do as much attacking as I can this turn. This will do. Me, I've got to be careful not to gain too much experience as this guy. So. That will do. Alright, we get to go first again, because these bandits are slow. Alright, that means... I could attack this same guy twice. But let's not. Nah, let's do it. Oh, I drew a plus two. That means I hit even harder than I planned to. Let's see, they have moved two. One, two, one, two. If I just take one step back, neither of them will hurt me this turn. It'll be beautiful. Watch this. Can't reach them with that. Don't need to heal anybody. I'm going to keep this guy where he is. I am going to go ahead and get an experience for consuming that earth. But he's not going to get to move because of it, and I think that's funny. He can move one, two. So I'll move over here. He couldn't move, so he did nothing, and he... Oh, wait. I didn't get out of range. Darn it. All right. When I take damage in this game, I have an option. I can burn cards that I've already discarded and get rid of them for good. I can burn one card that I haven't discarded yet, or I can take the damage. Right now, it's just one damage. I'm going to take it. The Brute's made for taking damage. By the way... If you see me overlooking this attack six, if you see that little flaming symbol in the bottom right-hand corner, that means once I use it, this entire card is gone for good. I can't, not only can I not use the top effect again, I can't use the bottom one either. So, not doing that. Not yet, anyway. Ah, an eye for an eye is the one I should have used. Alliate two.
I'll try and let these guys get up to me, and then I will try and attack them both. And then heal myself. That sounds like a great plan. How about the Crag Hearts? Alright, the bandits go first this time. Oh, and they're definitely going to come and attack Etu. Now, the elite is obviously tougher. I'll just take that damage, thank you very much. And you did nothing, stupid jerk. Some good damage out of Etu. Right before he heals himself. Worthwhile turn. Good old Craggy. What do we got? That will hurt Etu. But that might kill somebody. That will also might kill somebody. That's what we'll do. We'll... Move over here. I'm going to stand on this gold so that I go ahead and pick it up. Then I'm going to attack this guy. And I didn't kill him, which is ultimately good for me, because I'm trying not to get XP. Alright, now I just need to go as quickly as I can and kill as many as I can. That's good. That'll do. That'll do. All right, we managed to go faster than some very fast bandits. So, attack you and hope for the kill. Didn't manage it. We are going to move all the way over here and push this guy one space away. Oh, I guess I can't push him one space away, so I failed that. Oh well. Oh, and I messed up. Because using this would... Uh, yeah, using that would burn that card, which is not a thing I want to do. So you can always use the top and bottom just to do a two move or a two attack. So that's what I'm going to do. <sighs> Dull. Okay. Well... You know what? I'm pretty happy where I am. So, even though we're both kind of equally far away from these guys, they should be attacking Etu if they get attacks. Oh, and they're turning on Retaliate. So if I hit them, they're going to hit me back. At least if I use a melee attack. Hmm... I'll just go ahead and use them. I got three left for me. I wonder what I did with him. I guess I've already burned one. No? Maybe I just get more cards. All 
All right. They get to go first, and they're going to try and hit old Craggy. Stay strong, Pig Boppa. Ooh, three damage. Darn. Two damage. Wizard needs food badly. Okay. Just step politely up. Hit this guy. Dang it. Wow. I cannot draw a good card to save my life. And I got an experience from that, too. I could burn a card. I'm going to do that. Yes! Double kill. So that card's gone forever. I don't have Trample anymore, and I won't for the rest of the fight. When I'm done with this dungeon, I will get it back. Now both my boys are going to take a long rest, which does the following. It gets me two hit points back. It puts me at 99 initiative. I'm the last one to go if I take a long rest. It refreshes all my items, which I didn't use. And it lets me choose which card I'm getting rid of. Instead of a short rest, which would not refresh the items, lets me go on whatever initiative, lets me take the rest of my turn. But it's random what discarded card doesn't come back, and that can really hurt sometimes. I love Spare Dagger. I don't want to give that up. I don't think I'm going to need Sweeping Blow so much. So we're getting rid of that. Into that turn. Then Pig Bapa is going to do the exact same thing. Can't spare to get rid of my moves, man. Moves come so slow to this guy. Hmm. That's a dangerous card for this scenario. I don't want to get too much XP. Destroy an adjacent obstacle. Or move, jump, and immobilize. That's probably not coming up. Let's get rid of that. All right, now we're done in this room, and we looted everything. Good job, us. We need to go to the next room. And everything in the next room doesn't switch on, doesn't activate until that door is open. So let's go open that door. Get our ranged attack ready. I'm gonna turn on my target multiple people with my... Oh, but that gives me XP every time I do it. That's not great. Let's get a big move going. Doesn't matter how slow we go. All right. Put that pedal to the metal. And here we go. We got an archer in the back, two melee boys in the front, and some traps in front of the next door. So let's move up as far as we can and huck a dagger at somebody. Oh, almost got him. That archer's gonna be a real problem, I bet you. Oh, all you're doing is laying down a trap. Oh, and you can't reach me. What a good turn. Don't love that shield, but we'll deal with it. Think of a shield as just good old damage reduction. See, if I move this far in. Yeah. Oh, darn it. 
I wanted to do that. I should have just stopped there and done the other one. I make mistakes like this all the time. Doesn't help that it's late. Kill him! Oh! I drew the null again. Gosh darn it. Okay. Well, he needs to trigger a trap. That is his sole purpose in life. But it'd also be really cool if he could hit two guys at once. I got rid of my sweeping blow, though. So I'm not doing that. Eh. I think this will be really funny. Let's try that. You need to start making your way back to her. So let's give you a big ranged attack and a decent move. All right, Brute's turn first. So I have this idea. Oh, I can't quite reach him, dang it. You know what, it's okay. I'm gonna move here. Just stop right here. Push this guy through two traps. And he dies! And then I can try and disarm this fellow before he attacks me with some poison. Now, did that count as me triggering a trap? I would think so. It was my turn and trap got triggered. Oh, I got crit? Ah, but my helmet turned it into a normal hit. That's wonderful. I would really have hated to have taken... Six damage there. That was the effect of one of the items that I bought, is when I get crit, at least the first time, it doesn't crit. I'll take that damage, though. I want to make sure that we get the money. I'm just going to use this move to... Try and crit her. It worked! Oh! I was not... <laughs> I was not expecting that to happen. Yay! Wonderful. How nice. Alright. Now we just gotta get rid of you. And yes! It counted as me completing my quest. Wonderful. Uh, I wanna... Heal this turn instead of moving. So I'll attack him with that. For my turn, I also kind of want to heal. I've got this really nice heal. And this heal. So healing is all we're doing this turn. We're going to be so healthy by the end of it. Go ahead and do our attack. Oh, we're the best adventurers in the world, you guys. If he can heal twice, I can go ahead and pick up some gold. He heal me for four. He needs two. I'm going to pick up a little gold. Who needs help? I've got a potion for that. So I'm missing three. Cragheart is also missing three. So let's heal you all the way. Yeah. 
me most of the way. Excellent. Now we're just going to pick these things. We're just going to pick... Um, two things and really matter. So what we're doing is just... Trading for spots here. You get the gold. And... You get ready to open the door, and we're going to take a long rest before we go in. Yeah. And... I want my loot card. His loot's on the top. That's awesome. Pushing, I don't think, is going to be a big deal in here. So we're going to get rid of that warding strength. And Pig Bapa. Not gonna need my tiny heal, but my big ranged attack is still nice. We are not gonna need either of those. It is my quickest card. But I'm fine with that. Alright, I'm gonna run into the next room, probably aggro everything in there, and I'm gonna try and get them to attack me so I can use my eye for an eye. So I just need a big move. Like this one. That. For me, I need another big move. And hopefully something that hurts people pretty hard. There we go. Alright. Let's open the door and see what is beyond. Checking through the door, you find yourself face to face with the reason these bandits chose this particular hole to nest in. Animate bones. Unholy abominations of necromantic power. Look at that in the back. That thing. Nothing more to do but lay them to rest. Along with the remainder of this troublesome rabble. Yeah, extra arms. Look at them. Alright. So I want to move as far in as I can. Because they're going to attack and heal themselves like a bunch of big old dumb jerks. That's my turn. Let's see if I live. There you go, I'll take the damage. He gets hurt and he heals it right back, but I got an XP out of it, so hooray. He crit me! Oh, for not very much. And heals that damage right back. What a jerk. Wow, I am taking it on the nose right now. Really too bad I didn't bring my... Heals. Alright, let's use the big AoE. Can only hit one of them without hitting the brute, though. That was. That's less than ideal. 
Well, better than nothing. Let's have it be you. One damage is better than no damage. All right. Disarming a skeleton that can attack multiple times is a great call. And attacking on my second turn. Oh, this is the answer, though. So that's what he's doing. I need to heal him. And then maybe. <laughs> and then maybe heal him again. Oh, the skeletons are so fast! Ah, but they're only shielding and healing themselves, so not a big, big deal. They're already as healthy as they can get, so... Hit them both! Oh, got a crit out of that! Hell yes. Hit him again while we're at it. Nice. All right. I could take my potion. I did bring a potion for exactly this kind of situation. But Crackheart should be healing me for six. So I shouldn't need it. We'll save it. Big heal. Little heal. Not even a problem. Four damage! Wow! I just completely undid everything I built up. That hurt so much. Okay. We're getting into need to use the big cards and make big plays territory. I think we're going to move up and try and kill an archer with my shield bash. I can't heal anymore with this guy. Maybe it's time to start looking at picking up some of that loot. Oh, I can hit them both. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Provided they don't move, so I need to go as quickly as I can. But I'm not using my loot yet, so... Alright, Skeleton isn't going to go, and they don't have to move, so they shouldn't? But things are going to get dicey for my boy here. So I'm going to go ahead and drink that potion for Etu now. Yeah. So we're going to move over to here. You know what? If he's going to hit two, maybe he'll kill him. So... damage, stun. I just realized he can't make it any further than this on his turn to do that to attack. Poor planning. Poor planning. He could do his opposing strike instead if I could get somebody right here. Or... He can't make it quite that far. That's so lame. Hmm. A really strong attack, though. Let's 
so strong that I think I'm going to prioritize that on this turn. Oh, but I have to push her. I have to push her the full two, and she can't go anywhere that I need her to go. So we're just going to skip the push and beat the crap out of her. And not quite kill her. Darn. This hurts. At least she got stunned out of hers. So, move up to here. I need to be careful about when I kill these guys, by the way, because once I kill them, I don't have the opportunity to loot anymore. Unless I... Uh, except for the end of the turn that, that we did. I just messed that up. I'm an idiot. Worked out. Worked out. Alright. He needs to come back here and loot all this. He's gonna take a long rest this round. You are gonna go as fast as ever you can. Maybe hurt some people. Please go faster. Yeah. Foo, 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 foo. Okay. Immobilize. Cool. I will take that. Now, if I attack now, I won't get a chance to loot. So I'm going to hit her for not everything I've got and hope I don't kill her. I killed her! And he's long resting. I don't even get to see what's in the treasure chest. Ah, oh, that did not play out the way I wanted. Oh well, you know what? I shouldn't be complaining. We both are going to accomplish our missions. We're going to get three perk points out of this. With the last We're not going to come away rich. You take a moment to catch your breath. And steel yourself against the visions of living remains ripping at your flesh. You remember that, Etu? That happened your a lot. Your target is not among the dead. And you shudder to think what horrors still await you in the catacombs below. Or below? Alrighty there. We got only four per or, uh, four experience for Bit Pig Bapa. So... We got a new perk point. Two, as a matter of fact. And uh, Etu got one as well. We get a little bit of a, a stat sheet. Brute be definitely uh, carried us that time. Cragheart was mostly the healer. But he got a little gold out of it. So now we're done with that. We have the option to go back to town and buy stuff and do all that oodalali. We didn't really make enough gold to warrant it, though. So maybe we'll just continue on to the Barrow Lair. Normally, at the end of a, a quest, you'll like loot a treasure map that gives you a side quest to go do. And I didn't do that. 
I had good intentions, but I was... I was too deadly. It just happens sometimes. So. We are going to go to the Barrow Lair, but let's see what... I don't think I unlocked perks yet. I'm going to wear that outfit, by the way. I'm going to wear that outfit, by the way. I mean, look at me. Gorgeous. Right, let's have a look at our cards real quick. Yeah, I don't need any of that. Two beautiful perk points. One more and I'll be able to change my modifier deck. And those options are different for each character. And I honestly think Etus are going to be a little bit better. Let's call it there for the night. I think this was a pretty successful little test stream. I hope that whenever somebody sees it, that they enjoy it. Uh, all of my little numbers are looking good. The, the lights are flickering. The numbers are going up and down as they should be going up and down. So, yeah. I might come back to this. We might do this again. But it's really late here, and sleep is good for you, I hear. So, Thank you all very much for watching. In case you don't hear it anywhere else this week, I love you guys. Thanks so much for being here. Catch you next time.